Fahi Kanish, Helen O'Hearan, and Kuigulafed, Manthor, Mira Naked, Shasko Sashe. All Ireland Football Final 1966. The teams in the big one of Irish sport, Galway and me. This is the clash that the country has been waiting for, so it's small wonder that thousands of people come from all over the world to see the Battle of Champions. Two years ago, when these sides met in the semi-final, Galway won and won narrowly. Ever since then, Meath have been waiting to have another tilt at Galway. Galway, who have won the last two All-Irelands and are now bidding for an historic three in a row. And the headline set for them on this All-Ireland final day by the Mayo Miners, who lead down one goal and eight points to three points at half time. So often, Mayo have come to Croke Park with great hopes of success. On many occasions, they have gone home disappointed. This year, they've come with a young team, and as ever, there is some close, interesting football in the match that is called the Curtain Razor on final day. Mayo are hopeful of great things in the future. It was the Mayo side who ran Galway seniors so narrowly in the Connacht final. And now Mayo have a minor team, many of whom may well be fit for the senior side before very long. Down, who conquered last year's champions in the Ulster final, well, they try hard in this second half in which they are favored by the breeze. But try as they can, they cannot match the all-round supremacy of a very, very useful Mayo team. One nine to six points. The game is virtually over, and down try very hard, but the combination of the speed and the overall ability of the Mayo lads proved just too much. Yes, the boys of the West are setting the headline for the men of the West. And as the final whistle sounds on the minor game with Mayo the winners, one goal and 12 points, to Downs, one goal and eight points, it is indeed a great day for the lads of Mayo. And when the cup is presented to the captain, Seamus O'Dowd, on the Hogan stand, this is a dream come true. So much for the minor game. Soon, President de Valera is escorted to the Hogan stand. And has a word with Mrs. Lamass. Soon, too, the scene is set. The huge, colorful crowd. The weather, reasonably good. The Artain Boys Band and the parade of the team. The maroon jerseyed men from Galway and Mead in their green and gold. Agasanish Auran Levine. And so the big game is on. Galway, favored by the breeze in the first half, or first to attack with Jimmy Duggan sending a high ball in that's feeded by Jack Quinn, the Mead full back, but Jack is fouled, and there's a free out for Mead. Jimmy Donnelly, the kicker. But it is Galway who come back into the attack. And even in this early stage of the game, it's obvious that Galway have a combination that's going to be very hard to beat. A dropping ball that crosses to Jimmy Duggan. Sean Cleary tussling in front of the goal. But his kick blocked down and cleared out with a relieving clearance for me. Peter Moore fouled. But soon Galway are back into the attack and it's a high ball by Sean Cleary, the first score of the game. A point.
Meade swing back into the attack, but try as they can, they cannot wear down this very sound Galway defence. Galway have been picking off the points, adding up the scores. Jimmy Duggan, out into the centre of the field. Pat Donlan, Seamus Layden, and a high ball that drops in near the goal mouth. But Peter Darby is there, as he is so often for me to effect a clearance to Pat Reynolds. But the clearance broken up. As Sean Cleary sends in towards Matty McDonough out to the wing, and it's Liam Salmon across in front of the goal. And this could be a goal, it could be a point, it's not. The ball is blocked down, and the clearance is affected by Pat Reynolds. Back come Meath again, but still this defence is strong. Bosco McDermott with a clearance to the centre of the field. Added to by Ender Colloran. Added to still further by Jimmy Duggan, this 18-year-old lad playing in his first All-Ireland final, to Pat Donlan. Pat being chased by Tom Brown, but getting away, but his kick blocked down by Red Collier. Out goes the ball to Tom Brown of Meath. to Peter Moore. And Noel Tierney, having one of the best games of his life, feeling that one to clear it for Galway. Martin Newell coming in for this one, tackled by Oliver Shanley, beaten by Oliver Shanley. This could be a dangerous one, but it goes to Noel Curran, Noel Curran's kick blocked down by Coley McDonough, the ball in in front of the goal mouth, and there is Sean Meade to relieve for Galway. And in a flash, the ball is in the net via Matty McDonough, and Galway have scored an all-important goal, leading one goal and three points to no score for Meade. It seems hard to believe that as the points build up, Meade have yet to score, and there's their first score of the game, a point after 26 minutes by Murty O'Sullivan. Making the score, 1-5 to 1 point. Galway, the leaders. Liam Salmon getting out to the ball, in near the goal mouth. John Keenan trying to get it in, but it's blocked down and cleared out by Pat Reynolds once again. And as the halftime whistle sounds, Galway lead one goal and six points to one point. Can Mead, favoured by the breeze in the second half, pull down that lead? And there's one man who says, who cares? But here are the men who do care. Mead swinging into an early attack early in this second half. The Mead supporters, remembering the brilliance of Mead in the second half of the semi-final against Down, are more than hopeful at this stage, even though they do trail. High ball that's deflected over the bar by goalkeeper Johnny Garrity. Into Collins, kick out into the centre of the field. Down to Jimmy Duggan. Up to Seamus Layden. And once again, the combination of the Galway men really tells. Jim, Jimmy Duggan waiting with the ball, but it goes instead to Matty McDonough, to John Keenan, and John Keenan high over the bar for a point for Galway. Another high-dropping ball, well fielded in the goal mouth, and about to be cleared, yes it is, by Jack Quinn to Pat Reynolds. Pat Reynolds turning the fence into attack as he solos up the field. Referee penalising the Galway backs, but soon it's Ender Colloran sending the ball out into the centre of the field once again, the hands grasping for the ball. Bertie Cunningham with a clearance for Meade. Murty O'Sullivan. Murty trying to break away from the Galway men. And Murty now sending one that's gone in and over the bar for another Meade point. Yes, Meade have been picking off the scores, but... Let's face it, they're not really making any sound impression on the Galway men. Pat Donlan again in possession, and Martin Newell in position to send it to Seamus Layden. 
Jameis going left, right, and center. Out now to Jimmy Duggan. The combination telling once again as Jimmy Duggan drops this one into the goal map. But Peter Darby is there, and Peter clears out for me. Red Collier, the great-hearted man of the match for me, putting the Meath men into the attack. But once again, the attack is broken up. The speed, the football ability, the combination, and the great heart. That's what's winning the day for Galway. And make no mistake about it, it is winning the day. Noel Tierney once again in brilliant form. Seamus Layden, brilliant two in attack. And Matty McDonough fisting one over to make sure of his fourth All-Ireland medal. The only Connacht man ever to win four such trophies. At this stage, the game is in its closing moments. Tom Brown over the bar with a point for me. Go score once again. But in any moment, the final whistle will sound and Galway have become All-Ireland champions with the score one goal and ten points to Meads seven points. Yes, three in a row. And as Enda Cullen takes the Sam Maguire Cup on the Hogan stand, he is but one of the very many happy Galway men who are in Croke Park on this September day in 1966. A brilliant and historic day for Galway football.